everybody. Welcome back. It's Annette Green, uh, a mason jar shaped junk journal. Why not? That's what I'm talking about today. I'm going to share, uh, this is a process video. I'm going to share my process of putting this together. It's not necessarily a tutorial. Uh, I will not be giving dimensions and all that good stuff. I just am going to share um, my process. Uh, but let's talk first about the new Mason Jar Snow Globe Special. Okay, this is a new die set from Elizabeth Craft Designs, Mason Jar Snow Globe. It can be a Mason Jar or it can be a Snow Globe. Oh my gosh, and I don't know if you've seen some of the projects that people have been designing on the Elizabeth Crafts. Uh, Facebook page, YouTube channel, uh, everywhere. Just, just amazing. Uh, people are making shaker pages, cards, uh, albums, pages in their planner because yes, this is a planner page for the Elizabeth Craft Designs planner. So, uh, oh yeah, and by the way, that's not all. There's all these pieces too. <laughs> I will show you everything, but it's uh, something that I was asked to, as a on the being on the design team, I was asked to make just a quick sample of something. And all I had made in the beginning was this. And they took a picture, and along with some other amazing design team samples, this is featured in the kit when you buy it uh, on a like a inspiration sheet. So that's kind of cool. So you might see a little little part of mine on there somewhere. So that's kind of fun. Uh, but anyway, back to the special, you will get this big old set with pine trees and snowflakes and these adorable penguins, which I'll show you. This dripping snow slash honey, in my case, uh, the jar itself, this inside part to the jar, which gives you a whole bunch of variety of things you can do. Uh, good things, wish, a tiny little mason jar, which I will show you also some things. A uh, little tag, the little lid to the jar, this label to the jar, and so clever, you can use this one to make a bunch of little confetti pieces if you make it into a shaker, or just use this as a design element, which I did do on one of my pages, uh, right across the jar right there. So you get that. You get three silver one inch rings if you want to build your own album like I did. And then a little stamp set, which has the mason jar and all these great words and a couple of little kind of Christmassy themed like ornament stamps. So I just want to show you, I didn't use them in my project at all, but look at how adorable those are. Oh my gosh. You cut one of the parts in white and one in black, and then there's two different ones facing two different ways. This guy's a little smaller. <laughs> Aren't they so cute? So I had to show you those. And then I didn't end up using any of the little stamped and die cut mason jars, but the stamp and the die work together. Uh, one of the dies is actually the lid. It has a hole so you can make a little tag. That'd be a great little gift tag. Um, or you can just stamp it out like I did here onto paper, color it in the lid, and then I backed some of them onto other paper or cardstock. So lots and lots of fun things you can do right. with that. So before we begin and I show you through this, uh, let's talk about what I use to make it because there's all kinds of mixy matchy stuff in here. So I began with, of course, Reminiscence the book number two and a little bit from number one So those are from Elizabeth craft designs lots and lots of fun cut aparts and you know things for your base pages and whatnot. I did use the reinforcement pack two Which you'll see my entire album every single page has a whole reinforcer on it and then I think in just one or two little places I did use the stitched indented rectangles die. I grabbed all these stamp sets that I had. Home and Nature, these are by Elizabeth Crafts. Paper Love, In My Garden, Planted with Love, and then two brand new ones that I don't know the names of yet, and hopefully they will be available soon. And then I grabbed this older one, the Bullet Journaling 3 set uh, for this right here, which you'll see. Okay, what else? I incorporated some watercolor paper 
You will see that later. I incorporated some Graphic 45 Patterns and Solids paper uh, from just various different collections. And also from Graphic 45, this was from like their farmhouse paper. But the other side, look at the, can you see the like great parchmenty texture on this side so it's it's not just a plain cream colored paper and this is what I like to do a lot of my stamping on so you can see I was testing out colors and stamps and cutting things out um, that's what I use that for I had an old music book <laughs> very very old I think this said uh, 1940 something somewhere but uh, yeah I just cut the pages right out out of that you'll see and also I had this wonderful book was from a, a really lovely bookstore here in Greenville South Carolina and it's just it's just a notebook but it looks like an old book but it's got various different pages in it so very solid and then a grid and then the line paper with the word date up here so I use a little bit of that uh, you will see how I use some vellum to make some little seed packet um, little pockets, packets, <laughs> and finally I use this Artesia canvas pad, which I do talk about in a little bit more depth in just, I will, in just a minute. All right, what else? A uh, little bit of lace, you'll see, and this is fabric, because there's some fabric going on in here. Um, these were items that I cut out, but I did not use, but I did use quite a few others, you'll see. I sprayed a little Distress Oxide Spray and Antique Linen on one of the pages that was really, really white, and I didn't want it to be so white. And then, of course, I inked all the edges of everything ever, including every single little <laughs> hole reinforcer with Vintage Photo Distress Ink. All right, so let's take a look at this. Uh, I will be walking through the whole thing in the end if you want a little slower look at every single spread but um, basically I did like four sets of the same kind of types of pages and what I mean by that is after my cover my first page here is a collage page my second page is a fabric page it has a little belly band on there and a fabric pocket here I'll go into all of that my next page is a grid page with the little girl down here and then one of those blank pages a background page with the music note page and then that ruled paper and then it repeats again with a collage page a fabric page with bees and bugs and all kinds of goodies on there a fabric pocket grid page with the girl you're getting the idea right background paper ruled page and then another collage page so the idea for me I think as I was thinking in seasons if this was really going to be used as a sort of a nature slash seed related journal so every time you see a new collage page, that is a new season, in my mind. That's how I was thinking. So this has very, very much a Christmassy, you know, winter kind of feel to it. Last fabric page, grid page, oops, <laughs> so much, there's things stitched on the sewing machine. You will see all of that coming up. And then my inside back cover. So that is it, guys. Let's let's go through and let's make this. Let's follow along. Okay, and like I said, I'm working in like sets of four for everything every time. I'm thinking seasons, sort of. So um, I'm going to take you through a very quick process, like speeded up version of how I did these collage pages. Uh, they are backed onto, you know, pretty pattern paper that's peeking through back here. So I'm going to take you through each one of these as I make them. But here's a quick look at each one. And lastly, this one. Okay, so let's take a look at that real quick and then I'll show you the others.
to make my fabric pages like this one. I started uh, with a product from Arteza. Uh, this is a canvas pad of paper. Uh, it's very, very nice. It's actually like a coated canvas, but it's like cloth. So on one side it's very white and on the back side it's very neutral and, and natural looking. Uh, you could use any sturdy fabric. I just find that to have a lot of body to it. It's very nice. And so what I do is I die cut a sheet of that and it doesn't die cut all the way through. This is how it looks when you do get it all cut out, but um, it makes a pretty great indention into this fabric-y canvas paper. And so I just go in with my scissors and follow the line. It doesn't take but a minute. And then I have this shape here. And then I grab my desired fabric that I want to use. And then I used, rather than like gluing this down right onto here, because I think that would be a real mess and the glue would show through, I um, use some interfacing. And this is like a transfer web that I use. This one in particular is by Pellon. It's 805 Wonder Under Transfer Web. It's a paper backed fusible webbing. And you know, whatever you have on hand, this is what I had, just something to kind of give that a little more body. I'm gonna iron this on following the directions. And there's a paper layer that I will peel away and then I will die cut this and then iron this to my canvas paper. When I get all that done, then I take it to the sewing machine and I stitch just a straight stitch line all the way around. I go around this area as well. And then I ink the edges with some vintage photo and I did the same on the back. As a finishing touch to my fabric pages, I did add whole reinforcers. That's just paper glued with some fabric glue. And then I did this band with a stamped circle in the middle. The band is part of the mason jar set that I showed you. And then the backs are waiting for something special. So each of these looks like this. Okay, and I have decided for the back, instead of leaving these plain, because there's a number of things you can do here, but um, I'm thinking of adding a little fabric pocket to each one of these. So I'm just gonna glue on these edges out here with some fabric glue, and this would be a great place to put specimens or seeds or uh, dried flowers with stems, anything like that. And so how I did this, very simply, is the same Artesia canvas paper and I used a portion of the die from the mason jar set. This is that inner portion of the jar, so that's how it looks on there. And so I just kind of made a little mark with a Sharpie, how deep I wanted each pocket, so they were all the same. And I cut that out and then grabbed some lace, a little trim, put that across the top, and then went to the sewing machine. This one's a little better. Went to the sewing machine and just stitched all the way around. And I'm just gonna put those on there. I don't think I'm gonna do too much more. You may have wondered why the band. And uh, my thought was to have a little tuck place for some little seed packets. These are made from vellum. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to use the Elizabeth Craft Design seed packet die. Uh, it was, um, well, it has this window, which is wonderful. You can put acetate in there and all, um, but I just decided that I wanted something a little bit taller. I wanted to be able to do this closure. So I just went ahead and used an older die that I've had in my stash forever. Um, so that's how those are looking. And I know I said the other side I was gonna leave blank, but I, I couldn't help it. <laughs> I felt like it just looked too plain. So what I have done here, because this is all fabric, I thought that I should kind of stick with the whole fabric theme and feel of things. And so this is actually uh, scraps from fabric that I have cut out and I have glued right down. So this comes from, in case you're curious, 
I love this stuff. I'm looking for the name to make sure I get it right. Uh, it's by Kathy Holden uh, through Moda, the company Moda that makes fabric, and it's called Flea Market Mix. And as you can see, if I can kind of open this out and show you, look at all these awesome vintage cut apart images of all kinds. It can be flowers or, you know, farm or birds or mailing labels. It's awesome. So I just picked some that I liked and got those on there. And I also decided in these pockets, just as something to have, uh, I did some stamping. I did cut these out of craft cardstock using the Elizabeth Craft Stitch Rectangle die set and stamp them with the stamp sets that I've been using. They're all the same. And so they would go in these pockets. I cut these out of the papers from the Reminiscence Book 2, added some twine after punching a hole. And for this one, same, it was on the same sheet, just a lighter color. These were the, like a craft with a label on them. And these were just a plain ivory. So I did all this collage stamping on there. I punched the holes, I added eyelets, and then some of this baker's twine. Of course, I got to realizing that I needed a fourth because I am doing like sets of four of all the different page styles. So I did do one more fabric page. This one also has the band just like the others. And it has this on the back. Here's my little vellum pouch. And on the back is this just incredible moth or butterfly, I'm not sure. And um, this label with the nest and eggs and flowers. And then I went ahead and cut apart uh, these, I'm, I'm gonna call these like herb markers. All right, I have my piles of four here and they are in the order that I want them to be in the album. And so all the first pages in the four different divisions are my collage pages. And then second will be my fabric pages. And then third will be this uh, very simple grid paper. And I have stamped out the little girl. I've cut her out and put her down in the corner. I'm gonna just do a little bit on the edge and hole reinforcers and pretty much leave these plain because you know, in a junk journal, you need some space to write or to sketch or to just add some more things or collage that you want. So I am going to incorporate a couple of pages that just don't have much on them at all. So I will do a little something to each of those and I'll just show you that I've kind of started. And so all my girls are there. So as you can see, I have started to do a little something to some of the pages, a little bit of a border strip to reinforce that thin page and then whole reinforcers front and back. This one, same. And this one, I didn't do the border paper on the side. So just so you can kind of see the process, um, when I start a new page, I always keep the page prior uh, right beside it. So even though I don't want things matchy-matchy, I do want it to have a cohesive feel. So uh, I do tend to want to bring over at least a highlight color, or something from one page to the other. And because this right hand page is so plain with the grid paper, um, I feel like a nice bright color would be great. So, finish inking the edges of these little reinforcements here. Um, so we, we see we have the green here and that's why I put the green here. And then we have all these beautiful bright flowers down here and a little bit of red here. So I'm gonna put these red hole reinforcers on here. All right, and that is done. And so I will flip it over. And before I put anything here, I will grab the next page in line, which is this one. All of them are the same in the four piles. The back sides of each one has music note paper. And the front has a different background paper. And then a little bit of collage work up here. Everything is from the paper collection. And if you can see it very closely, I went to the sewing machine and I did some stitching around the edges. So looking at this now, I'm just looking at the green up here, thinking I need to put some green reinforcers here. And I've already done the paper strip on this side, so I won't do it on this side. And I think it'll be a okay. I've got some reinforcers over here 
kind of ready to go that look like they're going to work just fine. This is a good opportunity to share a little tip. Uh, I was thinking about how I want to make these that same kind of burgundy color there, so I grabbed this piece of paper. Uh, it has this on the back, or on the front really. This is from Reminiscence the Book number one. Um, and I do this all the time, you guys. I think, okay, that's it. And then I cut it out and then I happen to flip it over and I see the other side and I like it so much better because look at how interesting that is. I'm trying to get all of these up here. How interesting, more interesting that is, right? Can you see them? Then if they were all just this very flat, uh, solid color. Here's a quick look at how it looks. There's my little pretty variegated red hole reinforcers, green on the other side. I went ahead to the next page and did the same. And then the final, is this the final? No, one more after this one. This is that plain um, paper I showed you in the beginning. So each one of these in the other three stacks as well will have the topper, it'll have a tab on the side, and it will have some place for some writing, and then just maybe another little accent piece, and then the back side will likely be blank. Uh, then finally in each stack is the lined paper. This one has the date up there. And um, we will have to reinforce this a little bit too, as you'll see. So. I'm going to get through all of these now because you've seen all the hard work process stuff and I'm going to go back and get these all complete and show you the whole thing. Okay everybody, it is done. Wow. Finally. <laughs> this took me a good couple of days you guys. Um, just a lot of fun figuring things out, putting the layers on, collaging, and just really really enjoying myself. So I'll take you through it very quickly so you can see how everything finished out. And I did make some decisions that maybe you hadn't seen yet on some blank pages that I'll show you. But I'm not sure if this was on here yet or not. I went to my stash of Graphic 45 journaling cards and just picked various different ones and filled in some of those blank pages. So you'll see that. Uh, bought. Here we go. So we have our fat first fabric page and our little vellum seed packet and our cloth pocket back here with fabric embellishments. Here's how the little girl looks over here. And so every page has hole reinforcers, every single one, and that takes a lot of time. And then some pages that are very, very thin, I added this paper um, but yeah, that helped it out a lot. And there's another journaling card, kind of matches what's going on here. This was very fun to make. Uh, I would definitely make another. And I will talk about these rings here. I did mention them at the very beginning. Uh, they are not the rings that come with the album set or the, the die and stamp set. They had to be a little bit bigger. I just loved mixing and matching and using things that I had and not going out and buying a bunch of stuff brand new uh, and certainly not matchy matchy and getting out my stamps and my inks and playing around and getting out the sewing machine. But you can kind of see a theme going here, I think. Yeah, so there's two journaling cards there all connected together. Uh, you know, I just didn't care for that whole blank page look on that because it didn't have any grid or lines or anything. This stands alone fine, but um, that solid page was sort of bothering me just a bit, so. Here's our last section. Got our little herb markers there. I love this. This is just sewn on here so that we can get under here and write something or attach something inside. Another journaling card. This 
So this could be used for so many different things, really as a true garden journal or a seed tracking kind of journal or just a scrapbook really for a plant or seed or bee loving person in your life. So that's it for me today, you guys. I really appreciate you sticking with me all this while for my process and watching me make it. Um, talking about the rings, they are a little bit bigger than what comes with the set. The set has uh, three one inch silver rings. And at first I thought that I was gonna use, cause it's too thick, obviously. I thought I was gonna use the Graphic 45 uh, brass rings. I have so many extras of these, but they were a little bit too large. So I did have these. I think I might've gotten them on Amazon, just a little bit smaller. These measure like one and five eighths. And I think these are a little closer to almost two, one and seven eighths. So a little bit smaller and really, I don't mind that they're silver instead of antique brass, um, but they just worked perfectly. So Anyway, thanks again. Thank you for joining me. And um, I am going to be putting this in my Etsy shop. So I will put the link below and any details about when that's going to go. I haven't thought or decided for sure yet. I'll put all that down there so you don't miss it. All right, you guys. Thanks again. I will see you next time.